it so much faster than I was expecting. The year is 1971, and it's the beginning of the end of performance. An industry-wide softening of muscle cars is happening. General Motors' newest policy is requiring engines to run on lower octane, regular lead, low lead, or unleaded gas in preparation for the intro of the catalytic converter on 1975 model cars. The 70s brought to us some incredible machines. At least that's what I'm told. I wasn't really around. I wasn't there. Hell, I wasn't even a twinkle in an eye at that point. There was the Chevelle SS, and the Hemi Cudas, and Challengers, and the GTO. And there was the 442. All of which were slowly getting choked out of production. This is the 1971 Oldsmobile 442. And the 442 is available either as a coupe or a convertible. You can guess which one I have here now. That was mean, there was no need for that, I'm sorry. But despite the stranglehold of new regulations and an ever-changing automotive landscape, the 442 did the very best it could to shine on. Now, 442 is very simple. It basically stood for four-barrel carburetor, four-speed manual transmission, and dual exhaust, while some think the two stood for limited slip differential. I don't get that one either. In 1965, however, they changed that designation to mean 400 cubic inch, referring to the engine, obviously. Four-barrel carb and dual exhaust, 442. Which makes sense, because here we have a 455 cubic inch engine and an automatic transmission. I don't know, man. Olds made the switch from 400s to 455s in 1970, after GM dropped their cap in engine size in order to keep up with the arms race against other manufacturers. So let's just forget the whole 442 thing and what each number stands for. 455 still starts with a four, right? That's right, this is the monstrous 7.5 liter 455 cubic inch big block V8. An engine that in the 1970 442 produced a massive 500 foot pounds of torque. But as I mentioned earlier, a few factors came into play for the 1971 model year, which knocked this massive engine down to an output of only, only, 340 horsepower and 460 foot-pounds of torque. Get your foot off my shoulder. Net horsepower was around 270. So the horsepower numbers may appear at odds with each other. Horsepower figures went from being measured in a gross rating, which was basically just the engine on a stand running wide open, to a net rating, which meant they put the accessories on, such as the water pump, the alternator, AC pumps, all that stuff all the stuff that was going to be on the car, in the car. So this had 270 horsepower. sent to either a four-speed manual transmission or a three-speed automatic TH400 with a floor-mounted shifter. And we, of course, here have the automatic. Also in the interior, you've got leather-wrapped bucket seats, a sport steering wheel, wood grain-wrapped gauges, and a boatload of room for those who are not six foot five. And in this dress-up, a 71 442 non-W30 car, W30 was the performance pack, a 71 442 with the three-speed auto could hit 60 in 8.9 seconds. And it could do the quarter mile in 15.2 seconds at 99 miles an hour, I think. 
See, because this isn't a W30, which as I mentioned was the performance pack on the 442, there isn't a ton of performance data on this. Everyone thinks performance in a 442 and just, oh, W30, W30, ah! Oh. What you need to know is this car moves. really well, especially for weighing just about 3,800 pounds in convertible form. And it sounds great doing it. Jeez, I didn't even mean to do that. It's just got so much torque, it just picks up and goes. It's just massive amounts of torque. Going for a cruise, great. Lovely, you'll have a great time in this. There's not many things that are better. Going to a track day? This is a purebred muscle car from the 70s. It's no surprise it handles more like a John boat than a sports car. It floats around and it leans quite a bit. And when I say quite a bit, I mean it heavily leans around corners. But that's just how cars handled at this time. I mean, look at this corner. <laughs> it's not even a corner, it's like a little bend in the road and you're just, yep, yep, I'm holding on. I got it, I'm good. This thing is meant for dropping the roof, which this does have a power roof, might I add, and going for a cruise with your lady. If you have one of those. Now in 1971, Oldsmobile as a company produced 558,000 vehicles. 7,589 of them were 442s, but only 1,304 of them were 442 convertibles. 1971 would be the last year for the 442 as a standalone model. In 1972, starting the third generation of 442, if you could even call it that, the name became just an appearance and handling options package on the Cutlass. And from there, the 442 would eventually lose all the respect for its name and would eventually end its life on the front wheel drive, four cylinder, 1992 Cutlass Kylas? 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 Cutlass Kylas. What a terrible way to go. But we'll remember the 442 is this a big bodied, big block engined brawler that did this. Thank you very much to my friends over at Northeast Auto Imports for allowing me to review this 1971 Oldsmobile 442 convertible. This is the oldest car I've ever driven I have grown up as a muscle car fan, uh, as you guys know. If you if you know, I have a 1981 Z28 that I restored with my dad. Um, so muscle cars have a special place in my heart. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy motoring. No, oh, there's my turn. Am I gonna make it? This is awesome. This is this is cool. <laughs>